Good day, Junior Techies. I'm Mrs. Brimacombe, and we are going to look at companies where the focus is going to be buying back shares. Before we start with the activity, it's important to understand the following. A company can decide to buy back shares, which will reduce their share capital. These shares are retired, which means that they cannot be issued in the future again. Example. The company has an authorized share capital of 1 million ordinary shares. The number of shares in issue is 600,000. So if the company decides to buy back 100,000 shares, it means that there are now 500,000 shares in issue, but there will only be 400,000 available to issue on a later stage. At school level, you don't need to worry about that. Now, when a company wants to buy back shares, they can either buy it back from existing shareholders or on the open market. And there's various reasons why a company would decide to buy back the shares. Make sure that you understand what are those reasons. One example, they could feel undervalued on the market, so they decide to buy back shares. Very important, when they do decide to buy back shares, the company must be liquid and the company must be solvent. So if we look at liquid, it means that our short-term assets must exceed our short-term liabilities. Solvent, total assets must exceed your total liabilities. And then another reason before they can, it needs to be approved in terms of the memorandum of incorporation and by special resolution. So if we look at the bookkeeping process, when a company decides to buy back shares, it can be at a higher or lower price than the average price. At school level, it will always be at a higher price than the average price. So now remember from the previous video, your ordinary share capital is always at book value, which is the average price. Why? Because shares are issued at different times at different prices. So it means now that if I buy it back at a higher price than the average price, that difference, that amount which is higher, must be taken from somewhere. And that will be your retained income. Retained income is your surplus funds, accumulated funds. So when we buy back shares, the first thing that's happening, you need to calculate the average price. And we're going to look at in a little bit of time a little bit later on, how do we calculate the average price? But you have to calculate the average price. Once you've calculated the average price, ordinary share capital is debited and bank is credited. So your assets will decrease and your owner's equity will decrease. When we show the amount higher than the average price, it means that retained income is debited with that amount and your bank is going to be credited. Effect on the accounting equation, assets minus, owner's equity minus. Now, very important to remember for later on. The total amount paid will always appear in the cash flow statement. The average price in your ordinary share capital note and the amount above the average price in your retained income. Looking at calculating the average price when shares are repurchased. Very important. When we buy back shares and it happened after we issued shares, there's two ways in which we can calculate this. We can either take the balance in the beginning plus the total amount of the shares issued divided by the number of shares in issue. Or we can take the balance at the end divided by the total number of shares. If the buyback of shares happens before shares were issued, then we simply use the balance in the beginning divided by the number of shares. So keep this in mind. Look at how the information is given. I always say fill in the information which you've got, then find the unknown. Looking at activity two, 
You are provided with the information related to Fix It Limited, the financial year ends yearly 30 June. The company has an authorized share capital of 300,000 ordinary shares. The company has 200,000 shares in issue on the 1st of July 2020. So my accounting period starts the 1st of July 2020 and it ends 30 June 2021. So if you look at the information given information A, it's the post closing trial balance on 30 June 2020. The end of the balances at the end of last year is your opening balances this year. If you look at the financial indicator on 30 June 2020, that is last year's figures. So starting with the opening balances. The ordinary share capital had an opening balance of 1 million and retained income 260,000. To calculate the average price, we need to take the total ordinary share capital divided by the number of shares. So this means we're going to use that balance in the beginning, 1 million, and divide it by 200,000 shares. So it means that my average price is 5 rand. If my, if my average price in cents, it would have been 500 cents. We would have times it by 100 cents. It says that the directors agreed to buy back 50,000 ordinary shares from the estate of the deceased shareholder on the 1st of May 2020 for 620 cents. So this means that the total amount paid was 6 rand 20 cents. The average price is 500 cents, which is 5 rand, which means that the difference is 120 cents. And that will go into the retained income note. Remember, the total amount paid goes into the cash flow statement. So in my ordinary share capital note, oh sorry, in the ledger account, we're going to have bank 250,000 and in retained income details bank 60,000. To show the effect on the accounting equation, account debited with the average price Ordinary share capital, account credited, bank, assets, owners equity minus 250,000. To show the amount higher than the average price, account debited, retained income, account credited, bank, assets and owners equity minus 60,000. At the end of the accounting period, all income and expenses is closed off. Now, if we look at the net profit after tax was 120, 180,000. In my appropriation account, we would have had the net profit before tax minus income tax and whatever is left over will be retained and goes to the retained income. So this means that 180,000 is going to appear on the credit side of the retained income account and my details is going to be appropriation account. Now at the end I can close off the ledger accounts. If I look at the ordinary share capital, the credit side minus the debit side means that my new balance is 750,000. In my retained income, the credit side minus the debit side equals my new balance 380,000. We can now complete the ordinary share capital note and the retained income note by looking at the information that we've just completed in the general ledger. Starting with the authorized share capital. The company has an authorized share capital of 300,000 ordinary shares. 200,000 ordinary shares were issued in the beginning at 1 million minus 50,000 ordinary shares were repurchased at 5 rand per share, which is the average price. So in brackets, 250,000 equals 150,000 shares in issue at the end of the accounting period 
and the total is 750,000. If we look at the retained income in the beginning, we have a balance of 260,000 plus the net profit of the tax is 180,000 minus the repurchase of shares. And remember, this is the amount above the average price. Minus there were no dividends declared or paid. Equals the retained income at the end of the year. So please take note, it works out exactly the same as you've done in your general ledger. So you can later on. When we do financial statements and you're not 100% sure, and the same as with cash flow statement, you can use the general ledger account as T accounts. Fill in the information which you've got, find the missing information. To indicate which amount will appear in the cash flow statement, this is the total amount that we've paid. It's 620 cents times 50,000 and that equals 310,000. You could have also said 250,000 plus 60,000. Calculating the average price and the net asset value. To calculate the average price on 30 June, we can look at the ordinary share capital note, the 750,000, the balance at the end, divided by the number of shares in issues equals the same as before the buying back of shares, five rand per share. The net asset value tells us what the shares are actually worth. So we have to take our total shareholders equity divided by the number of shares in issue. So that means 750,000 plus 380,000 divided by the number of shares in issue. So the net asset value is now 753 cents or 7 rand 53. If we compare this to last year, it's clear that the net asset value increased. And the reason why it increased, we decreased our shareholders' equity. There's less shares in issue. Thank you very much. I hope you've learned a lot with regards to buying back of shares. We're going to look at our last activity later on. We are going to look at a combined activity where there's issuing of shares and selling of shares. But for now, next, we're going to focus on dividends on ordinary shares. I want to leave you with this quote. I find that the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. I hope you have a wonderful day.